Well, hi everyone. This is my second video in my Kitchen Basics series. This video is on mixing. So you saw in the in my kitchen area where I had certain stations kind of set up, like there was the mixing and storage area, um, there was you know measuring and baking, things like that. So this time we're just talking about the basics that you need for mixing. Now, when you guys think about mixing, making muffins, making breads, making all sorts of stuff like that, you probably think, well, I need a mixer. And I have one, and, and Kevin will show you right here. I have a KitchenAid. Um, this is a, I believe, a seven quart KitchenAid mixer. It's either six or seven. And I do use this a lot. Now, I I saved for this. We, we saved a, about two years for me to get this because I have actually gone through two KitchenAid mixers. Um, this is wonderful. It does a lot of things. Uh, you can mix with it. You can make bread with it. I've ground meat with it. I've made jam with it. It is wonderful, but when you're starting out you don't need this you just you need some basic stuff so if you can't afford the 300 and some to 700 and some dollar mixer which i totally understand that totally get that um if you're doing simple things like if you're making cupcakes if you're making um you know a, a cakes breads things like that well actually not so much breads but if you're making more like cakes if you're mixing like pudding things like that um you can get one of these this is a handheld mixer i got this at walmart this was 9.99 9.99 so um really inexpensive and what i'll try to do is the stuff that i'm showing you here or something like it, i'll try to find um links for it like on amazon or walmart or something and leave it down below so you guys know where to get it um, if you don't have the money for that, a hand whisk. Now this was a gift to me by a dear friend of mine. Uh, we do this thing at church called Secret Sisters and she knows I love to cook. So this is a whisk that actually scrapes the sides of the bowl, but you can go to the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Tree, and you can pick up a hand whisk and it will cost you a dollar. And sometimes like you can find them at Walmart for like, two three dollars and they come in a pack of three where you get three little whisks but um for things like muffins where you don't mix it as much as you do say like a cake batter cake batter you want to incorporate air in it that's where this is probably better but you can with a whisk it's just going to take a lot of elbow grease um but things like muffins this is going to be really good for that the next thing you're going to need is a good mixing bowl um, this is a set of three that came from Amazon. I got these. I like these bowls because they have these rubber bottoms on them. So they don't, they don't slide when you try to mix in them. Um, Pyrex makes really good mixing bowls. Those are glass. The reason I don't have glass is because I have four teenagers and my glass stuff has a tendency to get broken. This stuff, if this hits on the bottom, it just bounces. <laughs> now, if you're going to choose just one bowl like i said this came in a set of three it came with lids and everything actually it came in a set of four my smallest ones in the refrigerator holding sausage right now but um it came in a set of four with lids if you're only going to choose one i would choose a bigger size i would choose that because if you're mixing like a cake batter you need to incorporate air in it and you need to have enough room that you can do that um, you might find that this the sides for this are too high for like a handheld mixer then you might want to get one like i said pyrex the glass ones they sit a little lower and so you'll be able to move your mixer your hand mixer around in it but if you're going to get one always get the bigger one because it's multi-functional where these you can only put so much in these smaller ones here like these next thing you're going to need is measuring cups and measuring spoons so here are my set of measuring cups. Now, I will tell you, these are not my favorite ones. My favorite ones, I've used so much that they broke. So, but when you get measuring cups, if you can see here, there's raised, like this says, um, uh, what does that say? I'm getting old. <laughs> a fourth of a teaspoon on it. And then it has the Canadian measurements underneath of it. 
but you want it where it's either raised or embossed in. Cause you can, now I will tell you this, you can go to the Dollar Tree. You can get you a set of measuring cups, but those measuring cups, it's just got like a silk screen printing on it. And once that touches oil, that's gone. And so then you don't know what size you have. And especially if the ring comes off, you're going, oh, they're just kind of thrown into a drawer and you're like, I don't know what size these are. But um, you want something that has the raised or embossed uh, printing on it. The next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need like uh, a little, if this is a little more mixing, but mixing scraping type of things, um, you're gonna need a good spatula here. Uh, this, is, uh, this one is good, I like the shape of it. It's good for getting into your bowls. Um, this is kind of an all round good spatula to use. Um, like I said, because of the shape, you can get into bowls, you can get into jars. So if you were gonna put, pick one spatula, this shape here is probably the most multifunctional shape that is out there. Cause they, they, they come in a lot of different shapes, a lot of different shapes, but one like this, is a good one. The next thing that you're going to need, and this goes for like when you're mixing bread dough, if you're not going to use a stand mixer, if you're going to mix your dough by hand, and what you do is when you make bread dough, you start out mixing it with a wooden spoon. Um, the wooden spoon will help you get things incorporated, and then as it starts, the dough starts to get what's called shaggy looking. Um, then that's when you dump it out on the counter and you can knead it by hand. Again, you don't need the great big expensive mixer to do that. So using this, when you're using it with say your bowl, it scrapes down in the edges and as you're folding it over, you can, you can see all of your ingredients incorporate together. So you need a good wooden spoon. Um, the other one that you can get is a wooden spatula. Um, I don't find this quite as versatile as say this. This is probably, if you're gonna choose between the two of these, choose this one here. The next thing, and the last thing I feel like that you need is a rolling pin. Now, this I got, I believe, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we got this either at Tractor Supply or Rural King. This thing cost me maybe $3, and I like this kind. I like it because it's tapered on the end. I don't like the ones with the bearings in it where it just kind of rolls. I feel like you can't, um, what am I saying? You can't adjust the pressure with it. It just kind of has one pressure. When you push down with this one, you can pivot it. And um, because of the ends of it, it makes it easier to do that. So you could put a little more pressure on this end, pivot it around. So as if say you're rolling out dough for pizza or cinnamon rolls, which are them. Um, things like that pie crust, you need to be able to have a little more control of how your rolling pins move. And when you have the ones that, I, I mean, I could be wrong. Some people love those other kind, but I feel like this one, you have a more control over it. I forgot one thing. You need a good liquid measuring cup. Now these come in one cups, they come, this one's a four cup, there's an eight cup. If you're gonna pick one, pick this one here because it, it goes down as low as a half a cup and all the way up to four cups. So uh, that's kind of the in in the meat in the middle um, one. So that's the one that I would choose. So you're probably saying, Heather, that's great. It's great to know all this mixing stuff, but what do you do with it? Well, I'm going to show you what to do with it. We are going to make a very simple. Um, uh, like southern buttermilk biscuit recipe. That's what we're going to do right now. The first thing that we're going to do is um, sometimes it's, especially where we live, for some reason it is super hard to find buttermilk. Like when I lived in Ohio, I could go to the grocery store, buy a half gallon of buttermilk, and buttermilk lasts like a super long time. Like it doesn't go bad like regular milk does, but I can't ever find it at the one grocery store in our town. So I'm gonna show you actually how to fake buttermilk. What you're gonna do is for every cup, like liquid cup, you are gonna put a tablespoon of vinegar, some acid, vinegar, lemon juice, something like that. I use vinegar because my husband doesn't like, he can taste the lemon juice in it when I use lemon juice. So I'm taking a white vinegar 
and I'm going to put one tablespoon in my measuring cup. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our milk. I use whole milk. I feel like whole milk works the best when you're baking. Um, skim milk is just water pretending to be milk as Ron Swanson would say. So when you're measuring with a liquid measuring cup, what you wanna do is you wanna get down on eye level so that you can see like right here where it says one cup. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I've got one cup there and now I'm going to take my wooden spoon and I'm just gonna mix that. And I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator while I'm mixing everything else up so that this will start to curdle. We are going to sift together. Um, we have two cups of flour here. We have our baking powder, our baking soda, our kosher salt, and our sugar. And I will leave the recipe for this in the description box below. So we're just gonna sift this together so you don't have any lumps in it. All right, so now we're gonna add our fat into this. So what you need is, for this recipe, I have um, some shortening. You can use shortening, you can use lard, whatever. Um, but this is, uh, really cold. I left it in the freezer. So it's super cold and you want it super cold, especially on today where it's a little warm. And then we're going to add in, uh, this is butter. I cubed up some butter. So we're going to put that in there. And now I ran my hands under really cold water. You can use a pastry blender for this. You can use a fork. I prefer just to use my hands. And what you're going to do is you're going to squish the butter and shortening into your flour until it kind of looks like crumbly sand. The butter will give it flavor. The shortening gives it the flakiness that you want. All right, so if you can see here, it kind of has the texture of maybe kind of wet sand. That's what it should look like. Now, if you look, I'm not sure it'll show up in here, but our milk looks thicker. Your milk is gonna look thicker if you make your buttermilk this way, your faux buttermilk. <laughs> but we're going to pour this in and we're going to use our wooden spoon to mix this. Now I'm not gonna pour all of it in because there is, for me, there's a trick in how I make my biscuits. So here's our wooden spoon and we're gonna start, kind of make a little bit of a well in the middle here and just pour in there. And then I'm gonna leave about that much of it and I'm gonna just start stirring it you don't want to over mix these. If you over mix them, you're gonna have flat, tough biscuits. So you can see it start trying to come together. So what you're gonna, what you're looking for is for like when you touch it, you grab it, it'll hold together like that. So, this is looking at, I might add just a smidge more, just a little bit more. So you may not use the entire cup of milk, but don't worry, because we have a use for the rest of that milk. Now I have my biscuit dough be slightly wet, just slightly, because when you roll it out, you're gonna have to put flour on your counter. And that flour is gonna add, it's gonna suck up some of that liquid. So, so it's, starting to starting to fold together so slight bit more just a little bit okay. all right so that looks good we're gonna go from there and then now what we're gonna do is we're going to roll this out with our rolling pin so as you can see this is why I chose this bowl the, the bowl doesn't scoot around and my wooden spoon, it gets in the edges, it gets everything mixed up and it does it in a very gentle way. All right, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna get some flour and you're gonna throw down some flour. 
just like this. Not a lot, just enough that it's not gonna stick to your countertop. Gonna take our dough and you're gonna say, Heather, it's falling apart, what are you doing? Just watch, it'll be okay. All right, so we're gonna get all of our dough off of here. Now, you're gonna take this, kind of squish it together. Now, you're going to need this 15 times, no more, no less, 15 times. So, you go, one, and when you need, what you're doing is you're folding it over and you're pushing it with the heels of your hand. So one, two, three, four, five, and if it starts to stick, just rub a little bit of that flour. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, there, that's it. And that's what it'll look like. Um, it has a little bit of a spring to it, but this is actually more of a quick dough um, it, it's not a dough that it's going to need to, to, to rise any or to proof. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our hand, take our rolling pin and dust your rolling pin. And you're going to roll this out. And I always, I'll start like, like this, but then I, once I get it going, I kind of work in run to direction and I turn it, I turn the dough. So it's kind of an even, what you're wanting is an even thickness all around. And that's where I said where this rolling pin can pivot a little bit, that's where that comes in handy. So. We've got our dough to where it's maybe, I don't know, about half, between a half and a quarter inch thick. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to get a biscuit cutter. This is my cheapo Walmart biscuit cutter. It has been used and abused and loved, and it's even broken, but I still love it. You want something metal with sharp edges like this. You don't want to use a cup because it will squish down the edges of your biscuits and they won't puff up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to dip it in my flour container over here off. So you see how it's covered in flour now? and we're gonna start cutting our biscuits. You're gonna to wanna to go straight down and then turn. So straight down, and then turn. Cause that turn loosens it up. So you wanna get them as close as you can, straight down, turn. Straight down. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually gonna roll it out again because I didn't have quite enough room. You wanna roll it out, you wanna handle it as little as you possibly can, but you do wanna use up all of your, your dough. You don't wanna leave any behind. So we're gonna just gently roll this out again. And try to get as many biscuits out of it as we can. And then we always have, I always have this little one that's kind of the runt biscuit of the litter. <laughs> so it's just kind of not, you know, it's not pretty, but he, he eats. And I just kind of put it together like this. All right now going to put our biscuits in a pan. I prefer cast iron to do my biscuits in. You don't have to have a cast iron pan. You can use a cookie sheet. I've done that before, 
but I just like the way this browns them on the bottom. Um, I did rub a little bit of butter in it, just for you know non-sticking and flavor. So we're gonna put our biscuits in, and you want them to touch each other because when they touch each other, they kind of use each other to creep up on and they'll puff up. So, kind of like that. Now, I'm doing this and I don't know why, but it's because my grandmother always did it. And I don't know why she did it. Take your thumb and you push them in the center like that. And now we're gonna take that leftover milk that we had and you're gonna, you can do this with a pastry brush, but my grandma did it with her fingers. And you're just going to coat the tops of those biscuits and that will help them brown. And it'll keep it from, when you do it with your finger, it keeps it from getting too much milk on the top and making them kind of soggy. So your biscuits that you did that you had to kind of roll out again, they may not be as puffy as your other ones because you did have to work that dough a little more. The, your, your first biscuits will always be the most tender ones. Okay, so there we go, it's covered. We have our oven set at 450. It's pretty high heat. You're gonna bake these starting at 10 minutes, anywhere from 10 to 15, start checking them at 10 and to the, you know, desired doneness on the top, where it's, you know, brown enough on the top for you. I have my oven rack set in the middle, and I'm just gonna put these in here. All right, so these are done, and you can see they've all kind of fluffed up. Even the ones that were like my second rollout, like these three here, they still fluffed up, fluffed up. Not, that was the last one, he's not as big, but, um, this is where your wooden, your wooden spatula comes in handy because with your cast iron, you don't want to scrape at it because if it's seasoned well, it, things will pop right out of it. So let's see here. Yeah. See, it just kind of pops up like that. The bottoms of them are nice and um, crisp and you can see the layers in it. So we're going to eat these now. It's eating time. <laughs> and here I am. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you, I don't know if it was easy to see on the, um, the, the video, but if you can look, like there are layers in that biscuit. Now, I'm very finicky about my biscuits and how you open them. You do not open these with a knife. You don't do it. Fork. Fork. Fork and what hand. you do is you just poke it in around the edge like this so it doesn't squish anything because you still want your biscuit kind of warm so it melts the butter. And then, ta-da! You can see the steam coming off. Yep. Here's how I do it. So. Nice. And I like butter and jam on mine. Oh yeah. So I put butter on one side. And there we go. Nice. And then, Kevin likes blackberry jam, and I am going to try some choke cherry jelly that a couple at our church gave us. So let me put that on there. Trying desperately not to spill my biscuit right now. I'm a huge fan of blackberry jelly and blackberry jam. Yep. And uh, I like grape jelly too, but no one else in my family mm -hmm. does. Nope, nope. Okay, so I've actually never tried this before. My son, Miles, says that this is wonderful. He loves this. So we're gonna. I'm not ready. You're not ready. See, I only, do, I only do one at a time. I'll do this one later. Okay. Yeah, I did both. What are you gonna do, right? Oh, ready? Right. Here you go. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. Clink. Clink. <laughs> oh, That's a bomb right there. There's That's nothing really better. Oh my gosh, that choked cherry jelly is really good. Mm -hmm. I'm not a jelly person. I usually don't like jelly, but yeah. that, that's good. Yeah. Um, they're flaky, they're crispy. Mm -hmm. The, um, they're tender, that short bean gives it the tenderness, the butter gives it the flavor and the um, crispy flakiness. 
Mm -hmm. But these are really good and they're easy to make. And like simple. I said, real simple. And the more that you make them, the more you'll get the feel of them. Uh -huh. So, um, like when you're mixing them, you'll get a feel of how wet your batter is and how many, if, if it'll mm -hmm. hold together and stuff like that. But yeah, so that is our biscuits. And um, I have a child coming in and stealing some. <laughs> but um, I hope you like this recipe. I hope this series is helpful for you. Um, you can check us out on, we are, this is YouTube. We also have a Patreon page. If you would like to support us over there, if you want to, but you don't have to, I'll link, leave the links to the tools that I use and um, I'll leave the recipe down below. Awesome. All right. All right. More updates as we go, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.